Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So I use a lot of cover crops and I use a lot of wood chips, but I also use no dig. So how do you combine the three? How do you combine cover crops, no dig and wood chips? In today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you use cover crops, no dig and wood chips in one system. So in this bed, this is where I grew my potatoes last year in wood chips. As you can see, there's loads of wood chips just piled on the ground and they're breaking down really nice. After I harvested all my crops, I sowed cover crops. And the reason that I sowed cover crops was to protect my soil. It's got a thick layer of mulch already on it. Because if you remember with this bed, I grew my potatoes in wood chips and it was about a foot deep of wood chips that I grew my potatoes in. So that's a thick layer of mulch protecting the soil already. Those wood chips start breaking down and it turns into really lush compost. There's a lot of soil in there as well because what's happened is the worms have burrowed up They've dug out soil from the below and they've mixed it in with the wood chips and they've taken down what they're going to eat and they've incorporated some of that matter and they've turned the soil around for me automatically. So towards the end of the year what you'll end up with, with when you use a lot of wood chips like that is you'll end up with a lot of nutrients in the top layer, in your mulch layer. If you just leave the soil or even that thick mulch layer you can still end up with a lot of nutrients lost. And what I want to do is I want to build maximum fertility because I want to grow some good tasty crops this year. So that's the reason that I sowed my cover crop so I could give the soil maximum protection. We're coming towards the end of January and it's time to start cutting these cover crops down. I normally give it about a month or so for the cover crops to break down before I start planting into here. And we'll start planting into here towards the end of February, early March. And that's what, yeah, that's the sort of our time scales. So it's time to get these down, get them completely cut down. And I just use a pair of uh, shears now this is a really healthy plant and really nice one and it would produce some really nice seeds but unfortunately it's in the wrong place so it's got to go. So I'm just going to chop everything down. I mean the cold has done quite a bit, it's taken back, you know it's killed quite a few, you know it's, it's weakened quite a few of these plants so but they're starting to recover. I like using the shears rather than strimmers for this because what the strimmer can do is cut it down too small and turn it into complete mush. With wood chips as well is because they are quite carbon rich and I use a lot of fresh wood chips because it contains a lot of uh, leafy matter and organic you know, uh, green matter. Now this is why, one of the reasons that I sow cover crops into wood chips is because as the wood chips break down the leafy matter will break down quicker, the green matter will break down quicker and you'll be left with a lot of carbon rich thick wood chips. So by sowing cover crops you're giving it back, you're adding that green matter back to it, you're adding that nitrogen back to it, especially if you're planting legumes. So that's it, everything's down and I've got myself a little bit of exercise at the same time. Lovely. Now the simplest thing to do would just be to leave it. We've chop and dropped it and just leave it as a chop and drop mulch. But chop and dropping stuff, one thing can happen to some of the leaf matter that's on the top is they can oxidise and you lose some of the nutrients. So rather than allow anything to be oxidised and lose any nutrients, we're going to capture everything that we've got already here. So now what I'm going to do, now that I've cut, cut the cover crops completely back, is I'm going to shoot mulch it. And I've got some cardboard boxes and these are big freezer boxes that some friends have dropped over. And let's get all this tape off. This is one of the things that I've been doing in order to build my soil fertility here and I'm on really heavy clay or I started on really heavy clay and this is now soil that you can actually dig with your hands it's really nice easy to work with stuff so freezer boxes pizza boxes everything's going on now it doesn't have to be as though you're sheep mulching it um, to kill weeds because We've chopped it down and it's already going to compress the roots and it's going to suppress some of the growth anyway. And now this is going to suppress it even more. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a nice layer of compost over the top of this and then I can just plant straight into that compost straight through the com straight through the um, uh, cardboard and then I can plant straight through the cardboard into the compost and it'll work an absolute treat. Now the sort of material that I'm going to add over the top doesn't have to be anything too special. So here we've got some old plant pots that we've grown stuff in that's going over the top an old potato bucket let's see if we're lucky enough to get some potatoes and some nice potatoes here as well so that's a nice treat for on a winter's day So these were late sown potatoes and on a nice winter's day that's a nice surprise that. So the stuff that I'm adding onto the top is not too nutritious. It's not really massively nutritious material, compost that I'm adding. So it's not gonna, what's not gonna happen is this isn't gonna just wash away do the, do the nutrients because this, this is all spent compost. There we go. That's a nice little handful of potatoes there, isn't it? Oh. Here we go. So more old buckets of stuff. <laughs> and another potato bucket. There we go. Some more really nice potatoes here. There we go. So these are potatoes that are sowed late on into in the year hoping that we get some christmas potatoes so yeah these are potatoes that we sowed on late on in the year just some rubbish that's been so swept up it's all little hedge clippings and all sorts so all of that can just go on and it'll all act as protection for the soil so here's where I store my finished compost and this is all going on so we're going to fill a couple of wheelbarrow loads of this and cover that bed this is one of the things that I've got a little bit of a conflict with some of the traditional no diggers, the ones that just put the compost over the top in autumn, is I, be, I really believe that applying compost in autumn is not the best idea. It's better to apply it in spring. I've done a full video of explaining why adding compost in spring is much better than adding compost in autumn. And I'll leave a link for it up here. It's a little bit controversial because some people don't like that sort of thing and they've built a, and they've pushed adding compost in autumn but I really think it's better to apply it in spring than in autumn here we go <laughs> oh. can I squeeze through this gap oh I'm nearly there it's a bit of a battle
my rig seems to have broken so this has lasted me about 10 years it's just made out of old scrap wood but it's lovely for leveling um, it's lovely for leveling off soil and leveling off beds got the idea for it from do you know the old-fashioned ploughs they still use them so my relatives still use them cow drone ploughs or oxen drone ploughs and what they do is after they've ploughed it they, they take uh, a piece, they, dra they drag a, a thing like this which breaks up the sods now ideally it'd be good for them to go no dig but the idea has been great for me for when I'm spreading compost when I'm leveling out pieces of soil so there we go that's a lovely patch that's a lovely bed now that's prepared and ready to go I could pretty much plant into this so that's exactly what I'm going to do when I tra start transplanting my lettuces and I start transplanting some of my chard and my salad crops they're going into this bed it's a perfect bed for that they won't take too much nutrients out of the ground so once I've done with them my squash is going into here it's a good way of using cover crops in a Nordic system and especially combining it with the use of wood chips and you're just building fertility on top of fertility and you're turning it into something absolutely amazing I've done a good video on cover crops and the different types of cover crops and what they can be used for and how to use them I'll leave a link for it up here it's, it's packed full of information really good so now that's going to break down really nicely and it's going to turn into a really good bed all that green material is just going to rot down underneath here and it's going to be perfect for planting plants into one of the reasons that i've used cardboard that's a little bit manky that i've left outside is so it breaks down quite fast and the roots from the top can penetrate down into the soil really quickly and this bed is going to be absolutely beautiful for this year and this is what i do with all my beds so every year i'm adding compost i'm adding cover crops and then i'm adding compost on top of that and it's always a continuous sandwich and sandwich and sandwich of organic matter and it's turned into some really luscious really beautiful stuff i've if i had plants already planted here and the cover crops were interplanted amongst the cover crops then all i would have done was chop and drop them and i've done videos on how you can chop and drop cover crops and i'll leave a link for it up here as well but thanks for watching i hope you enjoy what you've seen don't forget what to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates it really does help by commenting and liking it just helps with the algorithm and don't forget to share this video out with your friends as well so i'm going to leave it there for this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah